Hey guys, I'm Jason and this is Build Buy Sell. Guys, you'll never guess where we are. We are in the heart of, I'm kidding. We're in Pacific Palisades. Where else would we be? We are literally filming all four projects that we have out here. I hate to be repetitive, but yes, we're in Pacific Palisades. That's where we are. This project is called Monument. And this is going to be a 6,500 square foot house with a basement, two stories and a rooftop deck. Uh, very similar to the project that we're doing on Marionette. The difference is this is on more of a, uh, this is, Marionette's more of a free form lot where this is more of a structured lot. We have four corners um, and it's pretty similar to a standard home we would build, including a basement and adding a rooftop deck on top. Uh, we bought this for 315 and our expected exit with a comp just down the street is at 67. Okay, so let's go take a look at it. On the, today's episode, we are going to be watching some concrete getting poured. This is a massive slab. Uh, we have slabs and footings being done here. Um, two foot deep. Going around, I think we're like eight, eight or ten feet around. Uh, that's a massive amount of volume for footings. Uh, this is for a basement though, so keep that in mind. Uh, we're gonna kind of go through a little bit on the upper deck of what you're gonna see from behind the basement walls. And we're gonna show you just some fun footage of the concrete getting poured, go through a little bit of that process with you. First thing you'll notice is all of the pipes are completely wrapped in a foam. The foam is actually a, uh, an expansion and contract, uh, contraction element that allows the concrete to set around it and won't compress the pipe. So that's a safety measure we keep there. I mean, you're seeing that waterproofing going all the way down through the ground. Concrete's gonna uh, be poured up right against it. So water will always sheet through it, not, not on top of it. As I'm looking, we set these forms in the center of the pad. Those, those forms are actually for helping, keeping everything level. So when we finish the concrete, we actually have a straight pour and not some wobbly, uh, fun thing to walk around on. Sometimes there's always issues with that anyways, but we can fix that later. We try to keep it as, we try to get it as close as possible uh, in this stage. Not too much else for me to tell you about in this, in this uh, stage of the game except for showing you behind the wall and kind of explaining how that shoring works. I think we're pouring 16 trucks today. So we're pouring a lot of concrete here today. It's about 16 trucks. I believe each truck is about 10 yards. So you're looking at 160 yards here. A ton of concrete. I don't know if it's actually a, literally a ton. I don't know how the equation works out to a ton. That was a joke. Thanks for laughing. Today we are going to be pouring probably, probably all day. Uh, we're trying to get two pumps out to the site to kind of expedite that pour. We're going to see how that works out. I will show you one other thing. Uh, if you see that form right there, that's going to be set just a tad below the rest of the slab. That's going to be for the elevator pad. And then there's another form just on the other side of me. That form is for the sump pump pit where all of the uh, extra water is going to go to, the sewer water is going to go to, and then pumped out from there into the city. The, the reason I show up to sites on days that we pour is very simply, I like to see the process. I don't need to be here. There's no real reason to be here. There's a deputy on site who watches the pour, make sure that we're using the right uh, PSI on our concrete, which by the way, this PSI is going to be 3,500. Normal is about 2,500. So we're going extra strong on this. Uh, the PSI is the pressure per square inch. So just really strong concrete, right? Uh, so we have a deputy on site. He's going to give me a report saying that we poured the right concrete, we placed it where it needed to go, it was vibrated appropriately. All of those things that need to be watched are watched by a deputy, watched by a supervisor, watched by the foreman. All those things are there. I come down because I love the process. I love seeing what we're doing and getting to be involved in the whole situation, the whole, the whole uh, project as well. The process of hiring a foundation contractor for a basement, for a slab, for whatever kind of foundation you're doing, um, you know, over the years I've built relationships with contractors who I just use all the time. But even in bigger projects that aren't normally the run of the mill projects, I still actually go out and estimate projects with other contractors to make sure that what I'm about to get into is correct 
that the person that I normally trust knows what he's doing. Everyone has all their ducks up in a row. When you're dealing with a bigger project such as this, it's not a simple four inch rebar, uh, number four rebar. It's not simple, you know, just lay it in one ground on the rod, you know, all these sort of things we'll see on Fisk. You know, Fisk is pretty standard uh, slab foundation, except for the fact that it's deeper footings. This project is a basement. So making sure you're meeting with multiple subcontractors who are professionals in their industry and can give you enough information to make sure that whoever you do use, you trust, then that's how you know who you use. So we are at the stage of starting our foundation, essentially. Imagine doing our foundation just 12 feet underground, right? Uh, our piles are in, our, water, our lagging is in, our slurry is done behind the lagging. That protects all of the dirt from falling uh, behind the wall. And the waterproofing is complete. And now we are digging our footings on our slab, essentially. Uh, and then what you see here is our bottom of footings done. We have all of our catch basins connected. We have all of our plumbing in. And all of this, all of the, the drains that were that are connected behind the wall, they're all going to the pump and they're gonna shoot out to the street from there. Uh, all of the plumbing is gonna get caught into a separate pump, that will get shot up and then into the sewer line. Once this plumbing, this plumbing, we have actually an inspection today um, that Beto will be doing. And that, that, once that once that inspection gets passed, we'll be doing our second row of rebar and then we'll be ready to pour. So we are pretty close to being ready. Um, just, I think two more inspections and then we'll get to pour. So you see very clearly that there are two walls on both sides that are shoring up the neighbor's houses from falling into ours, right? Um, once that's done and our footings are poured, we're actually going to start building the walls. And by building the walls, we're going to have to be building that back wall completely. And we'll be building the front wall completely. Where I'm standing right now is actually the garage section. So we're going to have only half a wall on this side and the, the cars will actually drive into the garage from right behind you. Okay. To give you an idea of how structural this is, um, a lot of this rebar is oversized. A lot of this rebar is overlapped. Usually rebar is around 16 or 12 inches apart from each other. And this looks like it's about eight inches apart from each other. So pretty heavy, pretty secure. And make sure that uh, this, this thing ain't going anywhere, all right? We have all of our water under test. That's gonna make sure that we pass our inspection without any issues. We have all of our caps on. We have all of our footings exposed. We've had that tested and, and uh, the engineer has seen that. We are expecting to have this project done within 12 months. So a normal project is anywhere between six to eight months and we tack on about two to three months extra for a basement project. Uh, not, not a project like Marionette where it's you know, a completely different structural animal. This is a very basic basement. So we tack on about three extra months to give us room for that when we wait. Um, you can see very clearly the red line marked out right there. That's the, actually the top of our footing. That's actually where the slab is going to be. So a lot higher. It's actually almost a two foot footing. Pretty big, uh, big, okay? Um, pretty structural too, okay? That's not a standard detail by any means. That's a hefty, uh, that's a hefty build today. This is actually, this is the, the house we're building here uh, and actually the house we build in all of the Pacific Palisades is custom spec homes. Those are homes speculated to be sold, okay? Every now and again, we do a client project. I'd say that's about 10% of our business. Uh, and I'll usually let you guys know if I'm doing a project for a client and what their picks or what their cho choices have been with, within the process. My company is comprised of multiple people. We have a few project managers, a few laborers, a few site and superintendents, and uh, we have an office staff as well. We do sub out our design, uh, but we keep it, uh, we, we synergize with between me and the designer, between what type of design we're doing, uh, what picks we choose, uh, you know, all these sort of details are picked out and then brought in as a, as a uh, community, uh, a synergized process. 
to really make sure that I'm on board with what we're doing and that the project is going to fit well with the area that we're in. I hope that makes sense. So one more thing that I want to kind of talk about from up on the, the main level, now I've spoken about it before in other videos, but really explaining the shoring wall and how that all kind of works. Um, basically, before anything was graded, we drilled down, we put those I-beams in, and then we started grading out our dirt. We would, we would take down five feet of dirt, and we would put lagging in to prevent the rest of that dirt from falling. Now, one thing to think about is that when we're cutting that dirt down, when we're cutting that first five feet down and the second five feet down, it's never gonna be a perfect straight cut. It's not like we're cutting straight, then that lagging is gonna press up right against the dirt. There's, a, there's gonna be a void there. So it's really important that we fill that void to protect the dirt from falling into the wall, keeping, keeping a structurally sound wall there. So I'll show you kind of what that looks like briefly uh, over here. Just really to give you a brief idea of what that looks like. We had some rain in LA, so we put some plastic on this to kind of protect it off from getting too wet. But you can see right here, that right there is called slurry. And that's poured right up against, you can see the dirt. See the dirt here, the slurry's here. And right behind that, you can see that, that is lagging. If you don't remember, if you haven't seen the videos, there's a time lapse in the slide. There's a bunch of footage of the, of the, the, the whole thing dug out and done. Uh, definitely go check those videos out on the YouTube. We're going to look at what this looks like before we start framing. So come check it out. Wow. Guys, I feel like I can sing opera in here. This is incredible. You can literally hear the uh, echo. What you're seeing here, uh, these are the lag bolts. So we're going to be putting a ledger along this whole entire basement and then securing those with those bolts there. We'll have a few walls, we'll have a movie theater in here, an elevator, a mud room. Uh, that right there is the garage I'll show you. Inside the garage, we've placed our sump pumps. So we'll have a steel frame that goes in here, that way the cars can slip back down here and park safely. We'll have two bathrooms in this basement. And then I'll show you what these are right here because they're a little bit strange. You can't really tell right away. But what you have right here, and what you have on the other side, these are called light wells. Okay. So what they're for is for egress in case of emergencies. When someone's down here and they need to get out quickly, they'd actually get out here, we'll put in a ladder, and they can get up and out safely. And those are installed in bedrooms or places of livable area. So we'll have one in the main area and one in a bedroom right here. And you see these wires that are kind of stuck into the uh, concrete, the shot creek right here. This one was pulled out. But those are used to make sure that when they're cutting the shot creek, they're cutting it all level and this all becomes nice and smooth. So it ends up looking really clean and nice like this. I almost wish we could leave it like this. It's so much bigger, right? But we're actually gonna end up doing this framing in interior walls and the whole entire, this whole entire floor, putting insulation in, putting drywall in, and finishing this appropriately so it looks nice and clean and finished. And the reason it's below the slab is because all of the water around the property and all of the plumbing that's in the slab is all being directed into this pump, into two pumps. There's a gray water and a black water. And those pumps are then directed out into either the LID planters that will be placed later and then into the street or the sewer or the sewer line that will be pushed into the sewer line and then into the, into the main sewer line. Uh, and that's just for sloping and for everything like that and actually getting everything to be pushed out into the street. Obviously, the higher you are, the more natural slope you have, the better for everyone.
my name is Jason. I host this show called Buy, Build, Sell on YouTube and you should be following me. This right here, I'm a contractor and I'm a developer. My construction company is called JJP Construction. My development company is called Shelter Homes. And you can find us at Shelter Homes LA on Instagram or our website, sheltercustomhomesla.com. On my uh, construction side, you can find me on Instagram at JJP Construction and my website, jjpconstructioninc.com. What are you still doing on YouTube? Go look me up.